So the next thing I want to talk about is the swim lane. So in your module two, there was a, a, a discussion and review of swim lanes and there was a video. And for a lot of people, use of a swim lane is a very new practice. And so what I wanted to do was to provide a template for use with your assignment, for your final assignment, because I believe there's a four mark piece on taking some of the responsibilities as you're analyzing them and identifying them in a swim lane. And in where I work, we use a product called Visio, uh, but most of you probably don't have that. It's not part of the Mount Royal suite. Microsoft Word does not make it easy to create swim lanes, so this is a template that's in PowerPoint that I'll share back. And I just wanted to facilitate what is, how swim lanes worked. Um, as an example, I wanted to bring up the swim lane template for a no smoking policy. Um, and really in PowerPoint, if you looked at this, and I'll put this in full slideshow here. Um, can everybody see that? Yes, I can see it now. Okay, great. So in, the yeah. uh, in your book, you know, uh, there was a little, just a little bit of information on the use of swim lanes. And really, it's, it's pretty basic when it comes to identifying a flow chart, because what you're doing is you're identifying um, uh, participants in a group that are dealing with a process. And from that process, there are decision points that are made. And often those decision points identify areas where there's going to be procedures and steps that have to be done. And also they identify the key owners and those responsible for various parts of the policy. So why this is important is it identifies in the early stages when you're doing your research, it identifies your um, your responsible uh, individuals and departments, those that will be accountable uh, for compliance uh, and for enforcement, as well as being accountable. And as we go through the writing format, you'll see how we write those key components into our policy. And they also identify workflow so that as you're trying to understand, you know, what's happening in the policy and what key information is coming forward, you're able to create that, that workflow. And so as per the, the screen that we're looking at, there's pretty basic shapes. There's a square, which is a step or an action and an overall flow chart. There's a, a diamond shape, which is a decision shape, which is a point in the flow chart where decision must be made. Um, so if it's a yes, it goes one way. If it's a no, it goes a different way. Um, and then there are lines and arrows and, and different shapes that connect these different processes. So as a simple example, if I was in a research phase and I was mapping a no smoking policy, you'll see on the left hand side my key stakeholders in this are my employees. They're here. The department managers, the executive, and human resources. So human resources in this organization, in this policy review, has the key responsibility for, for many different things as per those process, those boxes. So they're responsible for evaluating current legislation and regulations, reviewing uh, um, all of those practices um, and legal requirements that are going to uh, inform the no smoking policy that they'll be creating. And they're, they're going to be responsible for integrating these new requirements into a policy document. So that's a big box. And this is where there would be some key work done in order to understand what that policy document would look like. Um, other responsibility for this policy document is the actual executive. So in these swim lanes, and that's what they're called because they're like they're swimming, the executive have the next stage responsibility for endorsing the policy. And by endorsing the policy, they actually will, you know, be the ones accountable for ensuring that it's created and that it moves forward. And then it has that key uh, endorsement that makes the, pol the policy uh, resonate with the values of the organization, but also uh, important enough that people pay attention to it. Uh, so once written and once endorsed, it's the department managers in this organization that actually have to implement the policy at the departmental level and work with their employees to ensure that they understand and conform to the policy. 
So in this particular document, I'm just going to get rid of this box here. Um, the uh, employee in the swim lane here, uh, if the manager is trying to implement this smoking policy, no smoking policy that came from HR, and the employee is asked to adopt and there is compliance, then the policy is adopted and it's simple. If there's non-compliance, then in this uh, swim lane roadmap, the actual um, outcome goes back to HR for non-compliance. And typically in that policy, you would know then that you have to construct uh, some sort of way of identifying what non-compliance looks like and what disciplinary action and enforcement will be part of that policy. So the, the real uh, intent be behind including swim lanes and process documentation uh, in your policy analysis and research phases is just to help you sort of document out and draw out all the key stakeholders and all the different steps that are going to to be happening when you um, do your uh, review your document.